The risk-free rate is the rate of interest that an investor would be willing to accept for a completely riskless investment. And it represents effectively the lowest rate of return over a given time period for, for an investment um, that, that one would find acceptable and that would be expected. And it's typically, and although all investments have some risk, it's typically based off the rates for U.S. government bonds uh, in the U.S., for example. So for short-term um, investments, the, the, the risk-free rate would be the Treasury bill rate. And for longer-term uh, time horizons, the government, U.S. government bonds are considered risk-free. Now, every investment considers a very small degree of risk, and, and U.S. government bonds are considered risk-free for practical purposes. There is, of course, some theoretical risk that the government would default on its bonds, um, and when deficits grow exceedingly large, the, risks, the risk of that happening typically becomes higher. Um, but for practical purposes, we consider the risk-free rate to be that rate in the U.S. to be the risk-free rate. The, the government bond rate in the U.S. will be the risk-free rate. And all other discount rates, when we're talking about discounting, are based off of that for the corresponding time period. So for short-term disc discounting cash flows that don't occur too far in the future, we might use the Treasury bill rate and add a risk premium um, to adjust for the risk of the investment. For longer-term investments, if we're trying to discount them, we would use a discount rate that would correspond to a longer or medium or longer term government bond rate, US government bond rate and add a risk premium to that to get a higher rate um, and then we would discount using that um, and therefore a cash flow that is that is uh, will have some risk associated with will become smaller as the risk goes up because we're divided by one plus the discount rate. So the discount rate um, takes the risk free rate and adds a risk premium and the risk free rate in the US is based off of the government bond rate uh, for a corresponding time period, which is considered to be the lowest risk investment um, that, that one can find, and therefore it's based off of that. And the same would be the case in other countries. Um, the, effectively, the risk-free rate would be the rate that, the, that government bonds in those countries would provide. Um, and in some countries, certainly in, you know, in Western Europe, those risk-free rates would also be effectively very close to risk-free. In other countries where there's a higher risk of, def of the government defaulting on its debt, um, that risk-free rate may not be that risk-free at all, but nonetheless it, it is probably less risky than other investments within that region um, and could still be used as a risk-free rate. But uh, certainly in the US and in developed markets, the risk-free rate is based off of government bond or bill rate for that corresponding time period.